It's a dull, cold day at Ferryfield Airport as standard BMZ production models led by the MGA board a freighter bound for Montlhery, France. There's no elaborate send-off for the Riley Pathfinder and it could be just a deliberate trip for the Austin Healey. Two others, the Austin A90 and Wolseley 690, leave just as quietly in a later plane. No fuss. A very modest start to an adventure which will go down in motoring history as a remarkable feat. The achievements of five production cars racing against the clock. La Touquet Airfield, France. One stage on the way to the famous Montlhery circuit just south of Paris where the drivers will each take their production cars round the track, driving continuously for one hour at a speed of 100 miles an hour, if they can. For the drivers, like Ron Flockhart, the famous young northerner, and for their very experienced team manager, Marcus Chambers, a surprise is in waiting for them at Montlhery. The over-the-counter cars will be racing not only against the clock, but against some of the worst weather ever known on the circuit. First in, last out. The MGA, one of the new MG series, like all the others, comes straight from the production line. A point that the customs men won't miss. A last minute check over the route south and the BMC team is ready to take the road. At Montlhery, the mechanics get to work on the cars with a news bulletin gale warning ringing in their ears. An almost unheard of thing at Montlhery and a gloomy forecast for the trials. Wind speed on the track, more than 25 kilometers coming in from the west and wet, as Ken Wharton starts the MGA special for the first of the five one-hour trials. Automobile Club de France officials prepare to check the MGA's lapping times as its famous driver brings it flashing past the timekeeper's box. Fifty-six laps to go, eight seconds in hand. The progress of the gallant little car is inexorable, eating up lap after lap at a speed comfortably over a hundred miles an hour. Not long to go now, but the gruelling test will not be over until the full hour has been covered. And anything can still happen, particularly on this wet, slippery circuit. Then signals for the last laps go up. It's almost over and Marcus Chambers waves Ken Wharton in. For a full hour, the 100 miles an hour average has been easily maintained in spite of a continuously strong wind and often driving rain. Tire pressures and temperatures are checked so that the results of the continuous strain can be recorded. The MGA's engine is now sealed for examination after the trial by the Automobile Club. And now it's the turn of the Riley Pathfinder to be taken out for its test. It's a family affair. Trials driver Bob Porter decides at the last minute to take his wife and two others along for the ride. Bob's faith in the Pathfinder is soon justified, and although the car whips round at well over a hundred, the passengers make it look like just any weekend run. In 
inside the car, the passengers are dressed normally. No crash helmets or protection of any kind. But this doesn't deter Bob Porter. Soon it is Marcus Chambers who's doing the worrying, flagging the racing pathfinder to go slower. For this is a test of endurance and reliability at high speed with a standard production car. One hour later, the family outing is over with an impeccable performance by the Pathfinder on record. Two of the five production cars have covered their Tour Plus. Now it's the Austin Healy's turn. And it's a very worried Ron Flockhart who prepares to take her out. Reports coming in indicate gales. Already weather conditions on the circuit have become very bad. Off he goes, hood and windscreen up against the weather. Like all the team cars, the Healy is running on standard pump, fuel and oil, available to every British motorist. A point checked by the RAC in England and the automobile club officials here on the circuit. Wet or dry, it's all the same to the little Healy, but Ron Flockhart is having a tough job at the wheel, for the spray off the track and lashing rain make visibility at his speed extremely limited. laps to go and time in hand for Ron. And when it's over, Marcus Chambers, the master hand of it all, goes out to signal the Healy in. The third team car to cover the hundred in an hour. the Austin Westminster takes up the challenge. The driver, Chief Superintendent John Gott of the Hertfordshire Police, is determined this family saloon shall triumph too. Round and round whips the A90, taking everything in its stride. If the superintendent can maintain an hourly average of 100 miles an hour in the Westminster today, his alone will be an epic achievement. The strain on the car is very great, but its driver's skill and confidence are rewarded on the last laps. And when it's over, the A90 has many seconds in hand. A terrific performance by both car and driver. And now in the Wolseley 2, the superintendent got keeps up the good work. As the 690 laps steadily and comfortably, the hopes of the BMC team rise. If all five can beat the clock, it'll be a triumph for the British Motor Corporation. 17 laps to go. Then six. Then five. Fingers are kept crossed all over the track. Barring an accident or a tire blowout, the Wolseley 690 should make it. And here she comes with many seconds in hand. The victory over the clock is complete, and for Superintendent John Gott, the driver who helped so much, there's a big handshake waiting from Marcus Chambers. For the engineers and mechanics, for all of them, it's a great moment. Now it's time for the official check, to see that the five production cars are standard in every respect. On this count, the meticulously correct team manager has no fears. All five cars are exactly the same as those of the same model on sale all over the world. All correct. The record of an exceptional feat goes on to those coveted certificates. An outstanding achievement by five production cars of the British Motor Corporation.